when the eruption happened. And um, I was at home. It was Saturday. I was just with the family. Um, our family was preparing to make an underground oven. That's how we cook our food in the islands. We like to um, cook in an underground oven. It's a Polynesian way of cooking food. And um, while our, our family was enjoying a normal Saturday, uh, rest from work, I heard a very deep rumbling. The rumbling was very deep and there was a slight tremor like an earthquake that was slightly, you could, if, if you were talking, you wouldn't be able to notice it. You had to be quiet and you could feel the earth very slightly moving. And there was a deep rumble, a deep rumble, rumble, rumble for about, I'd say about five minutes. And then there was a huge blast. Um, the volcano is about 120 kilometers away. But when the, the first blast that happened, it was a very loud boom. It sounded like it was just maybe next door. And then all of a sudden you hear a louder rumbling. And then the big, the, the big boom was the second, the big uh, blast was the second blast. And your ears, like, you know, when you have, um, uh, you ride in an airplane and you get the ringing in your ears because of the, change in pressure. So there was a sonic boom wave that first hit before you heard the loud boom. And um, the curtains, I was in the living uh, room of my house and you, the whole, all the curtains moved like it, there was a huge gust of wind that came through. And right then, that's when everyone realized it was the volcano. And so we all came out and we looked up into the sky and you could see a huge mushroom coming out with very black dust. It was black dust. And it slowly moved out. Um, it was moving fast like an airplane. The dust covered and it blocked the sun. The sun, sun sundown should have been around seven. This was six or something. And once it covered Tonga, it just shut out the sunlight and it was like midnight. And so everyone in the main town in Nukalofa went uh, inland and it, into higher ground. And then that's when the uh, small pieces of rock started falling from the sky. And then you had like sand falling from the sky for a, a, a number of minutes. And then once all the sand, the rocks and sand fell, then the ash fell for like probably the next 12 to 16 hours was just ash falling from the sky like snow. And so we pretty much um, spent the whole night inland before we woke up the next morning and uh, went to work right away, starting to, the first thing as chairman of the board, the first thing I thought was, I need to check the airport and see what we can do. I got the uh, CEO and uh, management of Tonga Airports together. We put together a plan and we realized right away that we would also need um, help from the public. Uh, and thank goodness we were able to get uh, volunteers, about 120 volunteers that worked for four days from eight in the morning to 12 midnight every day just to help because uh, we realized how vital the airport would be in uh, receiving um, the first aid um, for the country. Tonga is a very resilient country. Our people are very resilient. And if you think about it, our ancestors were brave enough to get into small little boats and sail the biggest, most widest ocean in the world and land on these small little dots that are islands and uh, live here for thousands of years. And when you live on an island, you live like your family. And so when the family is in trouble, everyone has to help come together and help and work together. And that's the only way you can survive on a small island mm -hmm. is coming together, working together as one family.